in this lecture we're going to study ionization energies and uh, we're going to discuss the factors that affect ionization energy now the number one thing is we need to define what ionization energy is now ionization energies there are multiple definitions of ionization energy depending on which ionization energy are you talking about uh, uh, the uh, first sign is there's, there's a thing called the first ionization energy and what this means is that what the first ionization energy means is that if you're removing an electron and I'll give you an equation for example I have an element let's call that element X and I have a gaseous atom of the element and I'm going to remove one electron from that element and it's going to form a positive ion a gaseous positive ion now uh, whenever you try to remove electrons from atoms it's always going to be an endothermic process so the first thing that you need to remember is uh, whenever you try to remove electrons, it's an endothermic process. So ionization energies are all, they're all endothermic because the nucleus is attracting electrons and it would always be difficult to remove an electron. Uh, some elements have a higher tendency to lose electrons, some have a lower tendency to electrons. But every time you would have to apply energy, you would have to give the electron energy, only then can it escape the attractive force of the nucleus. So uh, it's going to be uh, always endothermic. And this uh, equation that I've given is an expression for the first ionization energy of an element. When you remove the first electron, and it's generally the outermost electron, and it forms a positive ion in the process. Now the proper definition of an ionization energy, which generally comes in your papers as well, is that it is the energy required it is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous unipositive or plus one ions and this ionization energy is measured under standard conditions so it's going to be measured under standard conditions and these conditions, these conditions are that you have, uh, it's going to be room temperature, which is 25 degrees centigrade. Uh, the pressure is going to be one atmosphere. And uh, these are the conditions that you're going to use to measure this, uh, this first ionization energy of an element. And it's always an endothermic process. The energy, it's, uh, it's whenever you remove the first electron, the outermost electron from an element, and uh, it's going to form a gaseous positive ion. The amount of energy required to do that is the first ionization energy. Uh, so we're going to move now to the second ionization energy. Now in exactly the same way, the second ionization energy is uh, the energy required to remove one mole of electrons, but uh, it is uh, the energy required to remove one mole of electrons when the first electron has already been been removed so which means that you're removing an electron from in an ion this time where and it's a gaseous ion one electron has already been removed that means the first ionization energy has already taken place and you're removing another electron so you're removing one electron from a plus one ion and you're going to get x uh, two plus or whatever the element is it's going to form a 2 plus gaseous ion. 
So, again, it would be energy required. You would require energy. It's going to be an endothermic process. You would require energy to move, to remove uh, one mole of electrons. So, it's energy required. Required. It's an endothermic process to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous plus one ions to form one mole of gaseous plus two ions so uh, the second ionization energy is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons but this time uh, you're going to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous plus one ions that means that the first ionization energy has already taken place and you're now removing the second electron from an atom so and this would be measured under measured under standard conditions and we've already discussed what standard conditions are in exactly the same way you will have third ionization energies and fourth ionization energies and fifth ionization energies so let me describe to you what the third ionization energy would be and I'm uh, not going to give you the definition so the third ionization energy so the third ionization energy would be that you would be the you would be removing the third electron from an atom the first two electrons have already been removed they are the first and the second ionization energy so this would be the energy required to remove uh, uh, the third electron or one mole of electrons from two plus gaseous ions so which means that two electrons are already removed and you're removing the third electron so you're removing the electron from two, uh, two plus gaseous ion and it's going to produce uh, a three plus gaseous ion so that would be your third ionization energy so it's the energy required to remove an electron one mole of electron from uh, one mole of ga gaseous two plus ions to form one mole of gaseous three plus ions and in exactly the same way you will have the fourth ionization energy The fourth ionization energy would be that you would be removing the fourth electron from an atom and it would be an atom in which three electrons have already been removed. So uh, you'll be removing an electron from a three plus gaseous ion. So it would be the energy required to remove uh, one mole of electrons from three moles of from one mole of gaseous three plus ions to produce uh, a gaseous four plus ion and that would be your uh, fourth ionization energy. So ionization energies keep on continuing until you are, you do no longer have electrons left uh, in the atom. So I'll give you a brief example of how this is going to happen. For example, I have a sodium atom. A sodium atom has a total of it has a total of eleven electrons and its atomic mass is twenty three. So the nucleus at the center. There'll be two electrons in the first. So there will be two electrons in the first uh, shell and then there are going to be uh, a total of uh, eight electrons. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight electrons in the second shell and there's going to be one electron So there's going to be one electron in the last shell. So this is a sodium atom and I've drawn three shells. So the first ionization energy would be that you would be removing an electron from uh, uh, one mole of gaseous sodium atom. So you'll be removing this one electron. Once that is gone, that's your first ionization energy. That would be the energy required to uh, 
remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms and once that is that electron is gone this sodium atom would have one plus charge so once that electron is gone let me remove uh, let me erase this now so once that electron is gone then you're left with this thing so let me rub that off so that is gone and that is gone so so one electron is now gone so that was your first ionization energy and once that is gone this remaining uh, sodium ion would get a plus one charge and your second ionization energy would be that you would now be removing another electron from this particular atom so you'll be removing this electron that would be your second ionization energy so the energy required to remove another electron from uh, this sodium one plus gaseous ion that would be your second ionization energy and once that is uh, gone you'll have a two plus charge on this particular ion then you'll remove another electron that would be equivalent to your third ionization energy the energy required to remove uh, one mole of electrons from sodium two plus gaseous ion and so on you keep on removing electrons so sodium is going to have a total of 11 ionization energies because uh, it has a total of 11 electrons so you're going to remove the first electron then you're going to remove the second electron that would be the second ionization energy then you're going to remove the third electron then the fourth and so on so each time the energy that is required that would be the ionization energy for that particular electron